Hello everyone and welcome to Philadelphia at Citizens Bank Park for the first of two interleague games between the Toronto Blue Jays visiting from the American League and the Philadelphia Phillies. Hello everyone, my name is Jackson Farrow. I'm joined by Drew Frank in the broadcast booth today on the Virtual Jays Network and we have a great pitching matchup today. Two number ones, it's Hyunjin Ryu versus Aaron Nola. Drew, Aaron Nola goes today and he's had a tough start to 2020. Two rough starts for him after a rough 2019, but what he showed in 2018 when he had the curveball working, he showed signs that he can develop into a true perennial Cy Young contender. Last season, wasn't able to get the numbers he wanted, but after two tough starts out the gate, if he can settle things down, this season is far from a lost cause from him. The seventh overall pick in the 2014 MLB draft gets set, and here's the first pitch. That one just painting the bottom corner of the strike zone, and we are underway here in Philly, and yeah, the Philadelphia Phillies, obviously a, a very iconic sports franchise, and any you know real franchise from Philly usually is. Uh, and, of course, everyone remembers them winning the World Series back in 08, and then going back in 09, but losing to the Yankees. And 
They've, uh, they've had some tough years recently, but, you know, with b some big signings and some guys emerging like Aaron Nola. Otsu hit up the middle there, and that'll be a base hit. But Philly's certainly still an interesting player in baseball this year as Bichette reaches there. Quick start for Bichette. Uh, slow start to his 2020, but a great way to start this road trip here in Philadelphia is first at bat, he laces that single for a great leadoff hit to center. Yeah, and he was a guy who, in the last series against the Yankees, uh, in that three-game set in the Bronx, Bichette was a guy who, certainly in early innings especially, as a leadoff hitter, getting on base, being able to be moved over by the rest of the lineup. And here's another guy, Kevin Biggio, who needs to keep doing that same thing. Biggio now getting his first chance to see a lot of these interleague play uh, pitchers. They faced the Reds last week, which was new looks from a lot of guys, and now seeing the Phillies again, two early interleague series. And for all these Jays hitters that aren't overly experienced, they're especially not experienced against these teams that they're seeing for the first time. Yeah, right about that. A good test for these young hitters is Kevin Biggio in the 0-2. Takes that pitch high, so it's a 1-2 count from Aaron Nola. And in terms of Nola's repertoire, what, what can we kind of expect in this one? Well, for him, it's going to be mostly fastball, curveball, changeup. And the curveball is going to depend a lot on how his night goes. If he's able to control it, get it down where he wants to place it, and generate the whiffs that he can get with it, then it's going to look good. If he's missing and his changeup isn't able to hit the corners he's trying to pick, then it could be a long night. As that one's fouled off, pitch number eight for Nola in this first inning here as he gets settled in. And yeah, he's a guy who can go the distance. I mean, in 2018, that incredible season he had, Pitched 212 innings, <laughs> which is crazy. His, his war, according to baseball reference, above 10. So what a season that was for him. And that was, that was actually the year after he signed his four-year, $45 million deal. <laughs> Maybe he should have waited for that payday. Here's the one-two pitch to Biggio. That one once again fouled off. Biggio, three straight pitches, fouled off into that same kind of spot just past the first base line there. And when you talk about an ace, you mentioned the 212 innings. That's what the front of the rotation guy needs to bring. Last year, he didn't quite have his stuff, but oh, man. Look at that one. Kevin Biggio. If it's fair, it's gone. And that one is out of here. Kevin Biggio, a two-run shot to right off of Aaron Nola. And before he can even register an out, Nola, it's already a 2-0 ball game. Well, that ball was up. And Biggio got that beautiful left-handed uppercut swing, got all of that one and lifted it well into the seats. Talked briefly before about what Nola needs to do in keeping those pitches down. That one caught a hole out of the strike zone. Biggio extends his arm and pulls it right into those right field seats. Just a beautiful swing from Biggio there. Man, if he can do more of that, he is going to be a prolific hitter at this level. His first home run of the season here at Citizens Bank Park, and now these fans have got to... You know, they're starting to stand up a little bit here behind the plate, and they really need to get some cheering going for Nola, who needs some motivation here. As, I mean, he allows a first pitch, or a first uh, inning single to start the game off to Bichette, and then a two-run shot from Biggio. This reminds me a little bit of yesterday's game that started off with such a bang. Well, not what we were expecting. We mentioned what Nola's done over the past few years, a third place for Cy Young in 2018, and he's facing off against last year's NL Cy Young runner-up in Ryu. So the fact that two batters have come to the plate and both of them already around to score, this, this night could uh, end up a whole lot different than one might have uh, predicted. be interesting to see how things work out. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Gurriel Jr., who... After a very difficult series in the Bronx, is now hitting below 200, below the Mendoza line, as they say in baseball. Is this just a, you know, a bit of an early season funk, do you think, or what do you think? I think it's pretty telling that Montoya was keeping him there. And even when we saw Bichette struggling in the leadoff spot, he kept him there because he's seeing enough here to keep his confidence in these guys. And the fact you mentioned the small sample size, it's still early. There's lots of time to get things back on track. 1 for 12 for Gurriel Jr. in three games played in the Bronx as he drives that one past the third base line, and that'll be foul. So a full count to Gurriel Jr. here, who's trying to get something going after a two-run shot from Kevin Biggio to start this one off. That one's inside for a walk. So first three hitters for the Jays' reach here to start this ball game. Nola, a very difficult start. He doesn't have an out, and uh, with 18 pitches already, nothing to show for it. And it's not going to get any easier now. Four, five, six coming up. It'll be Guerrero first, followed by Shaw and Teoscar Hernandez. 
Gritchick after that if it comes to it. And then even at the bottom of the order, before getting to the pitcher spot, it's Danny Jansen. All guys who have been either got the track record or guys who have been hot in Guerrero and Jansen over the past few games. That one's driven foul down into the seats past the first base line. And yeah, Guerrero Jr. hitting over 300 to start this year. He went four for 12 with a couple homers in that series against the Yankees that I was mentioning. And yesterday he actually had a first inning home run against Jay Happ that put these Blue Jays up 3 nothing in the first. So they're, they've been used over the past couple games, and it continues in this one, to being up early, which I think is important for a young team. Well, e exactly, especially on the road. You get the chance to bat first. The worst thing you want to do with that opportunity is go three up, three down quietly, and then put all the pressure on your pitcher to do the same. If you're able to jump out in front, it takes a little bit of stress off your guy out there. 0-2 count to Guerrero Jr., and he takes that one low and outside. A good offering by Nola, the 92-mile-per-hour fastball. And, you know, Nola, not a guy who necessarily throws heat, but I assume his command is what kind of gets him through. And the spin rate, especially on that curveball. And we see one there, whacked by Guerrero Jr. out to right, and look who that is. Bryce Harper makes the play. I'm sure we'll talk about him at nauseum over this game and next, but... Yeah, defensively for the Phillies, we've got Gene Segura at shortstop, Bryce Harper in right. Roman Quinn goes in center field for the Phillies today, and Adam Hazley in left. Scott Kingery at third base. D.D. Gregorius, former Yankee, at second base. Reese Hoskins at first, and J.T. Realmuto catching today, and he makes a catch there on that 0-1 uh, fastball pitch there from Nola. Now Shaw hitting, as I mentioned, below the Mendoza line. Uh, multiple players on this team are... Again, another slow start, do you think, for him? And I think more for Shaw. He's a veteran, and you'd imagine he'll get out of this funk in no time. Well, he was brought in here to hit. So facing off, especially in the National League now, pitchers that he's seen more than anyone else. He's got 11 career plate appearances against Nola specifically. He's going to be given every opportunity to hit. He beat Telez out for that job at first base, and here he's playing first base over Brandon Drury, who's been quite hot himself. So like I said, it really comes down to the fact that Montoya was going to give these guys every chance to prove themselves here. Shaw one for six in that series in the Bronx in two games played, and that one hit a pretty big homer. He drilled one down into that short porch out at Yankee Stadium. And he's in a 2-1 count now with a runner on first in the form of Lourdes Gurriel Jr. As that one is drilled foul down the first baseline. And for Shaw, when you mentioned it, he hit that one to the short porch, his home run against Cincinnati looked quite similar. He fouled that one way off, but that's the swing he needs to get his power. He needs to be early and really try and pull the ball like he did there. And he swings and misses on that offering from Nola as he strikes out. That's the first strike into the game for Nola. Well, nice way to bounce back there. Talked about it a couple times already in this young game. Keeping the ball down and keeping it low. He's got great stuff. He can really spin that curveball and really take a lot off his changeup. He's got the stuff to do it, but it's about finding the spots to make it effective. And that was a great example right there. As Teoscar Hernandez playing right field steps in, hitting number six today, and takes a first pitch ball 0 for 12 with five strikeouts in that series against the Yankees in New York. So, you know, a, a tough series for him. He's going to look to bounce back in this little two game interleague battle. And luckily for him, Fisher and Alford haven't done much either at the plate. So, right now, he's still getting that chance. No one's forcing him out of the lineup. As we see that one popped up, Reese Hoskins comes in from first to make the play. So, Hernandez is retired. The inning is over, half inning is over, but not before Kevin Biggio drills a two-run shot to right. And it's 2 nothing Blue Jays here on the virtual Jays Network. Hello everyone and welcome back to Philly as now we see Hyunjin Ryu make his third start of the season. Dazzling numbers you can see right there on your screen. The whip under one and the ERA under two. He didn't get a win in his first outing against the Red Sox back on the Jays home opener but he got the no decision in the game the Jays ended up winning. Got the win in his second time out as he looked really good against the Reds team and now he's facing He's facing the Phillies here in his first start on the road outside of the Rogers Center, and it's back in the National League. As Segura drills that one in a deep left field, Gurriel Jr. gets a read on it and makes the play to retire the leadoff hitters. So Segura playing shortstop today and leading off 
flies out into left, and oh, oh, here we go. Bryce Harper playing right field. He's batting 333 to start the year. Uh, where do we start with this guy? Left handed hitter, 2015 MVP, rookie of the year back in what, 2012? He was drafted when he was 17 years old, made his debut at 19, signed a massive contract with the Phillies prior to last season. And he hits that one over to third. Guerrero Jr. in the shift, and he's thrown out. Well, the big thing about that contract is the commitment behind it. He was signed the same offseason as Machado signed his. Machado's got an opt-out after the fifth year. Harper not only locked up longer than Machado, a full 13 years, he's got full no trade, and on top of that, no opt-outs. So not only is Philly committing to him with all that money, he's committing to staying here all the way pretty much until the end of his career. Yeah, and didn't have to move very far. The former Washington National just makes the little trip up the highway to uh, Philly. So, you know, two legendary sports towns, mainly Philly. Sorry, Washington. Um, but, you know, that rivalry, I'm sure, especially in the East here, should have some more merit to it, you'd think. But Hyunjin Ryu in a 1-1 count now to Reese Hoskins, who very slow start to the season for him. But I think if you're a, just a baseball fan... You love what Reese Hoskins does. A lefty bat can play some first base, and he's got some, some pop in him when he wants to. Pardon me, a right-handed bat, but lots of pop in that bat. And a nice balance to Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper always has hit righties a lot better than lefties, and Hoskins does the opposite from the right-hand side of the plate. So when they're both going, they're going to be great working together. Both of them have streaks and hot and cold. So far, it's been cold for Hoskins, but with a power bat, that can turn around quickly. Swings and misses there, yeah. Very Ed stretches his arms very well on that swing. It's so fluid. A 2-2 count. And you talked about Ryu, his great start to the season, and I agree with you, Drew. He's been fantastic. Exactly what the doctor ordered for this rotation, for this team, and certainly what they were willing to pay for in the offseason is that one misses low, and it's a full count now. And it's got to be comforting for someone. Spent his whole career in the National League. Comes over to the AL with the Jays, and two of his first three starts are actually back against National League teams. And that one's fouled off. And yeah, Ryu was a monster last season with a 232 ERA and a 197 ERA before that, the year prior. So, yeah, he does. He fares very well in National League ballparks. No concern there about interleague play for him. And yeah, he's he's familiar with the Phillies, which I think is the biggest thing. And you're really happy for the timing to kind of work out and him to be able to get this start in Philadelphia. So that one misses inside, and it's a walk, a two-out walk to the number three hitter Reese Hoskins. Great battle for Hoskins. We've said he hasn't quite found uh, the hits he's been looking for. The balls aren't dropping in for him at the plate. Works deep into this count against an experienced pitcher and ends up coming out on top with a nice take. Sometimes when you're slumping, that's just about the best you can do. That one's hit in the left field by JT Realmuto, a silver slugger and gold glover last season for the Phillies. And he's a free agent after this year, so we'll get to that a little bit later. But a base hit for Realmuto. So now two on and two out quickly here. After getting two quick outs to start this inning, a little, little bit of a situation here is D.D. Gregorius, the number five hitter, playing second base. So a bit unusual for him. He steps in to the box. Gregorius has actually seen Ryu a fair bit considering he spent most of his career with the Yankees. Three for eight with five RBIs and a home run. And he drills that one into right center field. The back goes flying and so does that ball. It is out of here. A three run shot. It's a 3-2 ball game. <laughs> Buckle up, Drew. We could have ourselves an absolute shootout today. A very hot start here on a Monday night in Pennsylvania. Not what we are expecting whatsoever as both Nola and Ryu show some cracks in the armor. Both balls just getting destroyed there. A couple of home runs, no doubters. Both of them. The first one off of Biggio's bat. The second he connected, he knew it was out of the yard. And you, you talked about it. Gregorius dropped the bat and took a stroll. He knew that one was well gone. Oh, man. That one was out of here quick. 412 feet on an exit below of 106 miles an hour. And so we see Ryu now allowing, you know, a Reese Hoskins to a walk. You think nothing of it, right? And then JT Real Muto with a base hit. You think, okay, a little bit of trouble here. And then Gregorius just takes him deep you know wasn't expecting that a lefty on lefty matchup especially well and i just started mentioning it before he hit that one out his last appearance against ryu was actually a grand slam last year in 2019 and not 
too common that you see that many, uh, that much of experience between two guys in different leagues. But Grigori saw him well that day last year, and so far so good. So a 3-2 ball game all of a sudden here. We're not even at the first inning yet. As Scott Kingery is in a 1-1 count. Swing and a miss on that low changeup offering from Ryu. And now it's a 1-2 count. Ryu trying to get a, out of a pretty tumultuous inning for him as he gets another swing and a miss there. So Kingery strikes out, but not before. D.D. Gregorius hits an absolute no-doubter into right center field and gives the Phillies the lead all of a sudden. They went into the game 2-0 and they came out of it 3-2 on the Virtual Jays Network. And welcome back to Philadelphia. Randall Gritchuk, the number seven hitter for the Blue Jays today, steps in and he's playing center field as he usually has this season. And he takes, he fouls off that first pitch offering from Nola there. So Nola already up over 30 pitches, and he's just started the second inning here. So definitely something to keep an eye on as both pitchers now try to redeem themselves a little bit after tough first innings, both of them allowing home runs. And it's an 0-2 count to Grichik now. And the nice thing for Nola, that gets him right back into this game. After going down early, with the, two, the first two batters he faced came around to score. Now he's almost got a second life here as he comes back on the mounds, this time with a lead. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss there on that low inside pitch. Would have pained the quarter regardless, but the second strikeout for Nola. And working north-south, keeping it down in the zone. Usually he sets it up with a high fastball. Here he comes down in on the hands with the fastball. Righty on righty, Gritzik just can't get down and scoop that one out, and it's a great position there to locate that heat from Nola. And now here's one of the hottest hitters on this Jays team right now. It's Danny Jansen steps in, takes a first pitch strike. Four game hitting streak, three home runs all of a sudden on the season. He's hitting over 1,100 in terms of an OPS, and he's coming off a great series in New York as he takes, uh, he fouls off that offering rather, an 0-2 count now. New York, you mentioned Saturday, two home runs. First one was a part of a back-to-back -back, back -back set with him and Brandon Drury. Homer again later in the game for his second, third on the year. Swings and misses there, so back-to-back -back strikeouts swinging now for Nola in this inning. So a bit of a different start to this one for him. As there's, no first, there's no singles being allowed, and there's certainly no home runs being allowed, at least yet. And now he's got the number nine hitter. No, not a DH. Instead, it's a pitcher since we're in a National League ballpark. Hyunjin Ryu at the plate. Steps in and takes a first pitch strike there. Ryu, a career 178 hitter. So not a ton going at the plate, but in 2019 with the Dodgers, he had his first career home run. So showing a little pop, but we'll see what they can do here. And that's a check swing there. They're going to say he went. So an 0-2 count all of a sudden to Ryu and... Yeah, coming over to the American League, I guess that's one of the benefits of being a pitcher coming from the National League to the American League you don't have to worry about hitting anymore. Takes that pitch outside. And what's the kind of strategy for a pitcher at the plate if you're not a very prolific hitting pitcher, as there are very few of them in the majors? What's the kind of approach for Ryu here? It's mostly just about making him work. You've mentioned Noel's pitch count already. It's just about trying to get him to throw as many pitches as he can. A great take before that pitch and a great foul there is he's doing exactly that. Nola's not going to want to have to throw five or six pitches to Ryu, but he's making him do it nonetheless. Right, and then he takes that one in there just for a strike. The ump calls it. Nola able to paint the bottom part of the plate. So <laughs> three up, three down on three strikeouts. Bit of a change of scenery here in Philadelphia as we head to the bottom of the second. Hello everyone and welcome back to Philadelphia, Citizens Bank Park, as we see Roman Quinn at the plate now, the number seven hitter playing center field today, and he grounds that one up over to second, Biggio is there to make the play, and retire the leadoff runner. Quinn getting a starting outfield spot, might have had to split some time, if not for the Andrew McCutcheon injury, McCutcheon went down 
with a knee injury, he's going to miss significant time. But for Quinn, that means he'll get a full starting job in center field. May have had one anyway, depending on how spring training finished up for him. But now the guaranteed playing time, he's got great speed out there. Tons of range on defense, and he can use that at the plate as well. Yeah, 109 career games for Quinn. I think one of the reasons for that is his speed and range in the outfield, keeping him in the big leagues as we see Adam Hazley swing on that. Misses it. It's an 0-2 count now. As that one is delivered way outside, that changeup missing. But yeah, Adam Hazley, here's another guy battling in that outfield. Turns 24 very soon here in April as he fouls that one off as well. Eighth overall pick in 2017 by Philly out of the University of Virginia. And he debuted in 2019 last season, so a very quick progression through the minors for Hazley. One of the other benefactors of the McCutcheon injury. Not that, of course, uh, this team isn't any better without McCutcheon. He's a star player and has been his whole career, but Hazley will get a chance to prove that he can do something now if he can manage to string together some nice at-bats before McCutcheon comes back and give the manager a good problem to have with too many outfielders. Well, he's very good defensively and a good contact hitter as well. A 292 average in three seasons in the minors. And last year, you know, he came up to the bigs and in 67 games have five homers, 26 RBI, and a 720 OPS. So definitely a lot of positive signs. You can see why he went so high in the draft. The 2-2 pitch in there once again fouled off. So Hazley really putting up quite the battle today. The left fielder now has eight pitches in this at-bat. Making Ryu work here. He's worked quite a bit already. That one missing low. Jansen gets to his knees to field it, or block it, I should say. We're noticing a lot of that changeup from Ryu, and we know he likes to use that changeup, but he isn't quite hitting with it yet. He's not getting a ton of whiff on it, at least early on here. Well, big pitch here, 3-2, setting up down and away. And that one misses outside. So Ryu misses his spots a little bit. Also, great effort by Hazley there fouling off some balls and making Ryu really work on that. An excellent at-bat with one away. And now with the number nine spot coming up, Joe Girardi will have some options here on what he wants to do with Nola. It's still early, and you've got the lead if you want to have him swing away. Maybe a bunt and run, get creative here. Don't get to see a ton of National League ball here on the Virtual Jays Network, but now here's some of the National League strategy. <laughs> As we see a bunt attempt there, but it to no avail as that one misses high. As you mentioned, Joe Girardi you know, coming over and very experienced, obviously had a, a career as a catcher in the majors and spent lots of time in New York with the Yankees. And it's time to make a change out there in New York. A couple of years ago, they brought in Aaron Boone. So Girardi comes over to Philly. It'll be interesting to see what he can do with uh, kind of a mixed bag team here. A lot of guys heading into their primes or a lot of guys in their primes right now. A lot of big personalities in that room, too. It should be interesting to see how they fare this season. As Nola tries to lay down another bunt, 2-0, and it's fouled off. So 2-1 now. And you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, the Phillies haven't had much over the past few years. And in, an America, in the National League East, that's quite open. This could be a chance if Girardi can stir something up here with the Phillies and really capitalize on the potential that they've had for some years now. Yeah, they went through a thorough rebuild here in Philly. 2-2 pitch to Nola, one of the benefactors of that rebuild as Shaw Fields throws to second for one and they won't bother going back to first but they do get one runner but oh it looks like they actually didn't get that runner very confusing play they're an excellent bunt from Nolan nonetheless questionable play by Shaw he wasn't playing in and he didn't charge it overly quickly the ball took time getting there decides to go to try and get the lead runner and he was safe by a decent amount there it was bang bang but not overly close either so very questionable Shaw only about three feet away from the bag when he decided to spin and throw the second so now Ryu has to navigate out of this with the top of the order up and two runners on with just one away that was a very confusing play it looked like it should have almost just been routine Shaw could have just kind of fielded it gotten a first and allowed the runner to advance but that one is flown out into deep left Guriel fields and throws an absolute missile to third so there will be no tagging on that play so a much needed out for the Jays here and much need out because if Segura manages to get on, move the runners around, you're already down one run, and it's the heart of the order coming up. It's starting out with the big man, Bryce Harper. He's already got two home runs this season, eight RBI. He grounded out in the first, so he's going to be a little ornery. And yeah, Harper, a guy so prolific, and, and 
you know, baseball, I think a criticism of baseball in the last 10, 15 years is that they don't market their stars enough. But we see a guy at the plate, arguably the biggest star in baseball, arguably the most marketed player in baseball, and he's without question not the best player in baseball. Kind of interesting. I think part of it just comes from the fact that all the way up through high school and in his minor league years with the Nationals, he was known as going to be the next big thing. And then he debuts and hits two home runs and everyone's excited. And he just jumped right into the scene right away, making an impact and making noise. And that's what's built to a lot of the, the hype and excitement around him that he still carries forward into 2020. So he takes that one just low, 2-1 now. So Ryu and Harper are a great matchup here. And I would say power on power, but Ryu isn't necessarily a power guy. He's not going to, you know, uh, overwhelm you with his, his arm necessarily, but his command is so sharp. It's, it's a star on star battle, if that. Because that was fouled off, a 2-2 count now. Nice work by Harper the, to see Ryu a little bit and deal with those inside pitches. Ryu works ahead now 2-2 with a chance to end the inning here. 2-2 two, two pitch, and that one misses outside. It's a full count to the number th two hitter, Harper, playing right field today. Reese Hoskins, another power hitter on deck. So, you know, with the full count here, with two away, with runners on, you just want to get this out and not have to worry about, you know, Hoskins and Real Muto coming up after this. Here's the pitch. That one driven but foul down the first baseline. Jansen set up there like you wanted it out of the zone away from Harper. That one caught a fair amount of the plate, and Harper made some good wood, but just early. Payoff pitch is fouled back into the seats, so it'll remain a full count. He's been working away. He comes inside there now. It'll be interesting to see whether he goes back there or sticks away on this another deciding pitch. That one is hit over to short. Bichette catches it on the liner right to him, so... Hyunjin Ryu escapes from allowing a walk and an infield single here and gets out of the inning, so it remains 3-2 here in Philly. And welcome back here on the Virtual Jays Network. Jackson Farrell joined today by Drew Frank in the booth. And Boba Shett steps back off. He led off this game as he is the leadoff hitter in the Jays lineup today. And he had a single in that first inning. Was eventually driven home by Kevin Biggio, the very next batter, who hit a two-run shot and gave the Jays the two runs they have. Now they're down 3-2 off of a Didi Gregorius three-run blast in the first. But... You know, very different first and second innings for Nola. In the first inning, as I just mentioned, he allows the homer. But then in the second, retires three straight batters all on strikeouts. Well, and that's almost the book on the Jays' bottom of the order. Very bang or bust because they've got Gritchick and Jansen who are known. And so far this year, they've delivered at the plate with power. But the strikeout's a big part of their game. Uh, big vulnerability for both team, both of those players on the team, and Nola was able to capitalize and followed up by a strike of the Ryu. So great second inning by Nola. Gets another strikeout there. Four straight strikeouts here for Nola, and he kicks things off in the third. You're getting a big out on Bichette. Well, another swinging strikeout there. Busted the inside corner on both Gritchick and Jansen. Sorry, on, on Gritchick and Bichette. Jansen, he goes up and away. You can see Ryu there just watches that breaking ball find the zone. And Nola now, four strikeouts in a row, has looked quite nice. Yeah, a lot of those coming on that low pitch, right at the bottom of the zone. He's got such an ability to command that pitch. What an asset for the young Philadelphia star. And now we'll see Kevin Biggio is trying to make himself a bit of a star. In his own right, as he drills that one in a deep right, this time it'll sell foul. Man, he got me excited there for a moment, having seen what he did in the first. And again, the first inning, he just demolished that ball. Him and Gregorius both knew when it was off their bat, that was going a long way, because you could tell great contacts, and it just was carrying tonight. 1-1 one, one count now to Biggio, on the two-hitter, playing second base. And he fouls that one off, so it's a 1-2 count now. And so Biggio, you know, he, he actually hit 16 bombs last year as he takes that one inside. 48 RBI for 
the rookie that year. And, and so 16 homers, I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at for a rookie by any means. As he fouls that one off, it remains 2-2. Uh, what kind of power potential do you think Biggio has over the course of his career? Well, his swing is groomed nicely because he's got a great launch angle that when he gets enough of a ball, he can really elevate it. He saw a, a high foul ball in this at-bat that seemed like it had the height to reach the upper deck here, but just just way foul. But again, the swing really procures that. So if he can strengthen the swing up a little bit and make some solid contact, he's got the fundamentals to really hit like 30-plus home runs if he can figure it out. Certainly got the play discipline, too, and we see it there. An excellent check swing on that low pitch. So he gets a one-out walk. So Biggio has... He's still one for one on the day, I should say, as he's, he's technically reached both times, but he scored in his first at-bat. So a good walk for Biggio to get there as we see Lourdes Gurriel Jr. now, who had a walk in the first. And we'll see what he can do now against Nola, who's up over 50 pitches here. And for Nola, in his 2019 race struggled, he had the worst strikeout-to-walk ratio of his career. It dropped all the way down from 3.9 in 2018 down to 2.9 in 2019. And a losing a full strikeout per walk really hurt him because he needs to command those pitches. Doesn't have the 100-mile-an-hour fastball that some pitchers do. And we saw some nice strikeouts there to in four batters in a row, but the walk from Biggio was what did a lot of damage to him last year. And a very slow start to the season this year for Nola. But you mentioned last year, yeah, he put up a 387 ERA and a 1.265 whip. So just not the same numbers that he was able to get in 2018 when he finished third in Cy Young voting. Here's a 2-0 pitch to Gurriel. Misses high. So it's a 3-0 count to Gurriel Jr., who already has a walk on the day and is on the verge of getting another one here. We'll see what he can do now in a 3-0 count. Nola deals. That one right up the middle. The four-seamer up in the zone, so it's a 3-1 count now to Gurriel Jr. Looked like he was taking all the way on that one. Yeah, especially when they're in the kind of slump he is. And then he swings and misses on that, so it evens up the count. All of a sudden, Nola's gotten himself right back in this count here. Three, two, one away. Gurriel Jr. trying to get something going after a slow series in the Bronx. He'd like to kick things off in Philly with the bang, and he drills that one into deep left, but it'll be caught by Hazley there in left. So two away, still a runner on first as Guriel lines out. And that ball, you can see, is stung over to the left side. He hits this one hard, and it doesn't even have all that much height. It was a true line drive. Hazley didn't have to come too far in because that ball was getting to the outfield quickly. So tough break for Guriel. You mentioned struggling, especially recently. So. When you square up a ball like that and look out into the outfield and you see he's set up right there to grab that, it's always tough, especially in a slump. That one is sprayed into right. Oh, and it just drops foul. But, man, Guerrero Jr. almost had a, a first pitch double. That would have, if that dropped, I mean, that would have, could have certainly scored Biggio there as that one is now grounded softly up over to second. Gregorius fields with those soft hands of his and makes the play. So after a one-out walk here to Biggio, it remains a 3-2 game as we head to the bottom of the third in Philly. Welcome back to Philadelphia as we see Reese Hoskins step in. The Virtual Jays Network, Jackson Farrell joined by Drew Frank in the booth. The Blue Jays are 8-2 to start this season in their first 10 games. And we'll see what they can do in their next 10. Baseball, after all, is a battle of attrition. It's not about the sprint. It's about the marathon. And that one is swing and a miss. Reese Hoskins there. So it's an 0-1 count as Ryu. Okay, so Ryu's outing has been interesting because he allows a three-run bomb kind of out of nowhere to D.D. Gregorius who we will see this inning. Last inning runs into a little bit of trouble. Thankfully, he's able to get Segura and Harper out. But, you know, can we maybe see him get into a bit of a groove as the game goes on? We, we've seen that in the, his last couple starts, for sure. As that one is hit out in the right, save that point, Drew, and that one's hit out to Hernandez, makes the play, uh, or throwing back into second, but not before a base hit recorded by Reese Hoskins. 
Well, Ryu, you mentioned locked in. He's yet to allow a run after the second inning. Just the, the two allowed in his first start in the first and second inning. Three allowed in the first inning here. He's worked late into the games because he's been able to settle in. He, he got the first two batters out here in this game, but then the two-out walk to Reese Hoskins was really got what got things going, kept the inning alive after the Real Mudo single. It was Gregorius that did the damage. So now with Hoskins reaching base again to start things up, and this time with none out, the Phillies are going to look to pile on. And we'll see if they can do that. J JT Real Mudo will try his best to add on here. It's a one-run ball game in the bottom of the third. 2-0 count to the catcher. And the free agent after this season, I mentioned he had a great year last year. All-star, gold glove, silver slugger, the whole deal. I think everybody already knew what kind of player JT Real Muto was, even when he was in Miami. Uh, but the trade over here, clearly beneficial for both the Phillies and Real Muto, as he fouls that one off past the third base side. Well, he's been a key part of their lineup. We mentioned that you need the righties to complement some of the holes that Harper has hitting lefties throughout his career. And Real Muto is one of those guys that can just hit. But against righties, against lefties, he's got great contact skills. He can get the bat to the ball, and especially from a catcher, you, you can talk about what he can do behind the plate, but to get that offense out of that position is so valuable. 2 2 pitch to Real Muto as he fouls that one off on the plate. And one thing I noticed that was kind of neat about Real Muto is that his home run total has improved in every single season he's had in the bigs. 25 home runs for the catcher last season. We'll see if he can continue to add to that interesting trend this season. A full count now to Real Muto with a runner on first and nobody out here as Ryu looks to try to get things back on the rails for him. And that one is a walk, so Hoskins with a single to lead the inning off and now Real Muto with a walk. So two runners on for D.D. Gregorius. Hmm, have we seen this before? Well, exactly what I was about to say. We saw this was a recipe for danger, bringing up Gregorius now with two career home runs against Ryu, but it was the work of Hoskins and Real Muto to reach in the first, and they've done that again here. And now we'll see what Ryu's got in his bag of tricks to try and get past Gregorius this time. That one in there, check swing, but it'll land in there low, so it's ball one to Gregorius. And that one fouled off, so it's a 1-1 count to the second baseman. Normally a shortstop in his career, but he's come over to Philly and playing some second. And as I mentioned, as we both mentioned, he hit a three-run shot in the first, if you missed that, to give the Phillies a 3-2 lead. 2-1 count now to Gregorius. And, you know, so last year he, he battled some injuries and, and didn't exactly have himself the best year. Signs a one-year deal with Philly in the offseason. So he'll be a free agent again uh, at the end of the season interesting about kind of the contract with Gregorius. You know, why a one-year deal? Why move to second? It's a lot of question marks for sure. Especially when to make room for him, uh, Cesar Hernandez left the Phillies as a guy that actually does play second base. So it was interesting the little shuffle they made, but I think the gist is that they made space for Gregorius' bat. And he swings on an inside pitch there, so he doesn't get the best of Ryu this time. Second strike out of the day for the left-hander. And that's the advantage of Ryu being able to work at Gregorius. He got ahead of him in the account this time, fell behind in the first at bat, and had to throw a strike that Gregorius hit out of the park. This time ahead 2-2, two -two, he had a pitch where he could go anywhere he wanted, challenges him in on the hands, and Gregorius extends the strike zone and gets Ryu the first out. The Scott Kingery step in and hit that one over into left center field. Gritchuk tracking it and makes the play. So that was quick. All of a sudden... A strikeout to Gregorius, and then a flyout from Kingery. And now there's two away with two runners on here. And now through most of the dangerous parts of the Phillies lineup, there'll be Roman Quinn, which, while well, there's still time for the Phillies to do something, and Quinn definitely has the ability to make some noise, Ryu's just an out away from getting out of this danger after allowing the first two runners to reach here. And that one has hit the opposite way over in the right. Hernandez reaches up and makes the play. So after some trouble early on, Ryu gets out of it. We head to the fourth inning, still 3-2 here in Philly. Yeah, welcome back to the Virtual Jays Network. As we see 
It'll be Travis Shaw, Teoscar Hernandez, and Randall Grichuk here in the fourth inning for the Blue Jays. And Travis Shaw, the mayor of Ding Dong City, as uh, uh, one of our color commentators, Liam Crothers, calls him. And it's his actual name, apparently, although I haven't heard that too much on broadcasts. But nonetheless, Travis Shaw steps in 0 for 1 on the day. He struck out in the first. And we'll see what he can do here. Lefty on righty matchup. You got to like that if you're Shaw. But he is 1 for 10 in his career against Nola. And that one hit the opposite way over into left. And Hainsley's there to make the play. I should say Hazley, not Hainsley. No end in that one. Makes the play to retire the leadoff hitter in this inning. Well, he went opposite field there against the shift, which is something that we haven't seen too much from Shaw. Talks about in the first inning that he wants to get his bat around early and try and pull a ball. That's where his power's always been throughout his career, but even just trying to bloop a ball opposite field isn't an approach that we've seen from him. But now that he's starting to struggle, you wonder if that was intentional, if he's been working to take it opposite field, and it'll be worth keeping an eye on if, if we see that more of that from him or if that was more of just a one-off. You're right about that. I mean, Hazley was in the shift there, and if, if he had been shifted even harder, which a lot of teams do with Shaw, we've seen that already this season, I mean, that could have potentially fallen down and gotten him a base hit. But nonetheless, he is retired, so it's Tansker Hernandez in. He's 0 for 1 in this one. He popped out to first in the first inning to end that inning, actually. And Nola, it'll, this will be his 66th pitch. We'll see what he can do here against Hernandez. A 1-2 count. That one's fouled off. Hernandez staying alive. And we talked about Ryu, who settled in. Nola really looking good here. After we talked about the first two batters he struggled with, he's bounced back with a bunch of strikeouts and hasn't allowed a hit since. Yeah, you're right about that. And five strikeouts on the day for Nola here in the fourth. 2-2, two -two, he's looking for another. And he gets it! Hernandez tried to check his swing, but they're going to say that he ended up going regardless. So... Two away now as Randall Gritchick steps up, the number seven hitter. He started the flurry of strikeouts back in the second. Well, and that's been a problem for Gritchick most of his career. Low on base percentage numbers because he often will chase balls that are out of the zone. And he's been hot so far this year because he's been hitting those balls that are in the zone, left over the plate. He's been punishing pitchers for their mistakes. But how long he's able to sustain that will come down quite a bit to how strong his discipline turns out to be this year in 2020. That one's it over past the third base line. will be a 2-1 to one count now to the center fielder and kind of a veteran on this Blue Jays team, although he's young himself. And here's the 2-1 pitch. Gritchuk drills that one into right and it just sails foul. That one was looking good, wasn't it? Well, we talked about him punishing the stakes. Almost gets one there. But now we have to battle 2-2. Two -two. And here it is. That one is fouled off, so the count remains 2-2. Nola actually drafted by the Blue Jays back in 2011, but chose not to sign with them. So not much uh, history there. He went back to school with them, never in the organization. And he gets a strike out there. So Gritchuk, the 28-year-old, gets out on that. Two strikeouts on the day for him as we head to the bottom of the fourth in Philly. Hello everyone and welcome back on the Virtual Jays Network as we will see Adam Hazley up next, the left fielder hitting number eight for the Phillies. And, you, you know, in the last inning, Drew, we were talking about Aaron Nola and how he was funny. He was initially drafted by the Blue Jays before going seventh overall to the Phillies. Uh, and we see another guy here, Adam Hazley, who... Uh, was drafted early as well. Part of this Phillies rebuild that I briefly mentioned, but another guy who we don't see here, Mickey Moniak. He went first overall in 2016. Now, you know, very, you know, a lot of hype with that prospect as Hazley drills that one in the center. But we don't see him on the team this year. And now he was drafted out of high school, so he was 18 when they drafted him. I get it. But Moniak still working his way. Right now he's at double A. And, you know, scouts penning him as a fourth outfielder. 
Missing on a first overall pick like that can really slow down the rebuild for your organization, can't it? Well, especially when you look at the rest of the draft. Big name there, Pete Alonso was in that draft. There's a few other ones, Shane Bieber. You know, if you imagine how far along the Phillies would be in their contention window if they had an arm or a bat like that. But that's just the, the chances and the flukes that you get with the MLB draft. Way less certain than all the other leagues. Yeah, you're right about that. First overall picks, you know, sometimes they don't turn out at all. We've seen that for sure. As we see Gene Segura now, 0 for 2 in the day, a couple flyouts to left. He steps in, takes a first pitch ball. So uh, while we were talking about that, Drew, so Hazley with a leadoff single, then Nola advances the runner. So runner on second, one away as the Phillies try to generate some runs here. And just to continue with that 2016 draft, the two runs that have scored from the Jays, Bichette and Biggio, actually both drafted in that year as well. Bichette in the second round and Biggio a little later in the fifth. It was a pretty stacked draft in terms of the younger talent that we're seeing now coming up. Uh, Jesus Lazardo was in that draft now with Oakland. So we, you can't fault the Phillies too much because you do have so much uncertainty when it comes to the MLB draft. But there are certainly some names out there. As Segura fouls that one off, and count remains 1-2. But yeah, we see how a draft can quickly influence uh, the major leagues. Doesn't take very long as that one's hit into center field. It looks like that may score a run, and it will. So Hazley comes around to score on an RBI single from Gene Segura here with one away. It's a 4-2 ball game. Richick playing somewhat deep out there in center field. That ball dropped in front of him, and he had no chance to throw at Hazley, who knew as soon as it was off the bat that it was going to get down. Takes a couple hops before Britchick can get to it, and even with his strongest throw, no chance at the plate. And now it's a two-run lead here with Bryce Harper up and still just one away. And Harper drills that into a deep right center field. Gritchick on the warning track, makes the play, and is able to throw in very quickly, so Segura cannot tag. So two away and a runner on and a run scored in this inning for the Phillies. Well, and watch for Reese Hoskins here to maybe have a chance to break out of his slump a little bit because it's only the fourth inning, but he's already seeing Ryu for the third time now in this game. Had a long first at bat where he saw seven or eight pitches and finally drew a walk, a great battle. Then he had a nice single taking it uh, up that 3-4 hole against the shift in his last at bat, and he just needs one or two big hits to break through. You can see 0 for 4 yesterday, a trio of strikeouts, hitting a bingo number this year, 0 64 I believe his average is. Nothing pretty, but something here, just something to get something going. Let's see if he can do it against Ryu. 1-1 one, one count now to Hoskins. As I mentioned, a fascinating case study. You know, when he came up in his rookie year, hit 18 bombs in just over 50 games played, so he was not messing around his rookie year. And he drills that one into left center field. Gritchuk giving chase on the warning track, and he makes the play. So a couple of close calls there as Harper and Hoskins both go into the deep outfield, but Gritchuk there to make the play on both. Phillies tack on a run. It's 4-2. Hello everyone and welcome back. So we saw the Phillies tack on a run in the last inning off of a Gene Segura single if you missed that. So 4-2 here as Danny Jansen steps in against Aaron Nola who's already up to 74 pitches. What do you think is going to be the key for the Jays for the rest of this game? I know they have to hit and generate some offense but how are they going to be able to do that? Well, at 74 pitches for Nola already, we mentioned briefly off the top that he is a bit of a workhorse. Pitched 212 innings in 2018 and actually led the National League last year in games started and batters faced. So his pitch count's getting up there, but that doesn't mean he's anywhere near done this game. So they've got to try and string some hits together to force him out and force into that Phillies bullpen that's been really damaged by injury so far. 2-1 count as that pitch sneaks into the strike zone. For the call, so two balls and a strike to Jansen. So still technically a hitter's count here to the catcher. Hitting number eight today, and you'd think maybe they Montoya would think about moving Jansen up, line up a little bit the way he's been playing, but he remains in the eight hole today, and he swings and misses on that knuckle curve. So we'll see what he's got. 2-2 two -two here. 
And here's the delivery from Nola. That one's fouled off down the first base side and bouncing around a little bit. So the count remains 2-2. Two -two. A lot of him not moving up is also Montoyo not moving the, the guys up in the lineup down because he wants to give them a chance to break out. And a swing and a miss for Jansen there on Nola's 80th pitch of the game. So eight Ks on the day for the right-hander. And all but one of them were swinging. Just the one caught looking when he froze Ryu with a slider. And just very dominating. Like we've said, he's settled in. And now he'll have another chance against Ryu looking for his ninth strikeout. He's got some run support. He's also got three straight strikeouts now. As he takes on the number nine hitter, the pitcher, Hyunjin Ryu. Two strikeouts each for Jansen and Gredzik now. They've been good when they've been good, but they also have a lot of that swing and miss that they have to iron out in their swing here before you get too, too deep in this season. As Ryu fouls that one off, so it's a 1-1 count. Nola delivers the pitch. That one is driven into right field, but Harper has a read on it and makes the play very nonchalantly. So two retired now, nobody on the base paths. For the Jays here, as Bobichette comes up, he's one for two on the day, a single and a strikeout. And a slow start to the season for Bichette, as we've mentioned a little bit in this game, but he does, he's shown the ability, especially in the Yankees series and even today, getting on and coming around to score. Last three games, as the graphic just showed there, two runs scored, so he's contributing to the offense for the Jays, but kind of in a different way. As he drives that one into deep center field, looks like Quinn will get there. So three up, three down for Nola here once again in the fifth. He seems to be dialed in at the moment. Real Mudo, Gregorius, and Kingery up next for the Phillies. Well, everyone, welcome back. Virtual Jays Network, Jackson Farrell alongside Drew Frank in the broadcast booth here in Philadelphia at Citizens Bank Park. So Hunjin Ryu, not the best start for him thus far, and he'll face the four, five, six hitters for the Phillies, starting with JT Real Muto, the catcher. And he's one for one on the day, a single and a walk for him. That one in there for a strike, so it's an 0-2 count quickly here to Real Muto. In the pen, Wilmer Fonten, Sun Yamaguchi, two guys that can give you quite a few innings. Both of them starters in the past. Both of them were starters as recently as in 2019. That one missing low and inside there. So a one-two counts a real Muto, the catcher now. But yeah, bullpen's got to start getting warm in here in the fifth. As Ryu, his pitch count's getting up there. He hasn't looked great so far. Uh, coming off a tough inning where he allowed another run, but he gets a strikeout in the leadoff hitter there. Swing and a miss. Three strikeouts on the day for Ryu. Starts things off well here in the fifth. Not a pretty swing there from an elite hitter, JT Real Muto. Quite a bit out in front and chased it quite a bit out of the zone as well, swinging well into that left-handed hitter's batting box. So Ryu able to get a strong first out here after a shaky last inning where even though he got out of it he allowed a run and gave up two deep fly balls to Harper and Hoskins out to the warning track in center and now we see D.D. Gregorius at the plate three run homer in the first gave the Phillies the lead and a strikeout in the third but he gets a base hit there as that one's hit into right it'll get down so a one out single for Gregorius who seems to be having reused number a little bit today there's at least a battle going on at the plate which is pretty fascinating and hitting it through the shift there. The Jays had the book on him, expecting a ground ball on that right side of the infield, but pulls it a little too far for Biggio to get over there and get to it, and it's a clean signal map, single there for D.G. Gregorius, and here we go again with Ryu back pitching from the stretch. So we see Scott Kingery for the third time today. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a fly out to center. And he takes that one right up the middle for strike number one. So Kingery, it's interesting. He's 25. He debuted in 2018. And prior to that season, he actually signed a six-year, $24 million deal. So, you know, I'm not good with math. I was told there'd be no math in this profession, Drew. But not a big contract for a guy who signed it when he was so young. And it's an interesting contract that has a lot of ability to both limit and help either side of it. They get 
both teams are, are locked into it. And for Kingery, it's some um, financial protection. But for the Phillies, you mentioned he was pretty unproven when he signed it. And you would never know what you're going to get. But for a guy like Kingery, he can play multiple positions. He can do a lot for the team. So far, it's proven to have some potential to work out pretty nicely for the Phillies. Yeah, he's very versatile. You're right about that. And... He hit 19 home runs last year in 2019, so it might have been a really good gamble by the Phillies there. We'll just see how things play out for the number six hitter today. And that one is high. Evens up to count at two now. Hunjin Ryu up to 85 pitches with one away and a runner on in the form of D.D. Gregorius. Here's the 2-2. That one misses inside. And the nice thing about Kingery is even if, say, his bat... Uh, goes cold for a while in a National League game he still provides value with the ability to double switch and play all around the field give guys rest days his versatility is worth something in and of itself second rounder in 2015 he's in a full count now eight pitches in this at bat against Ryu so making him work here with one away and here's the payoff pitch that one is fouled off so the battle continues at the plate here Great work from him. Next, it'll be the bottom of the order coming up. So just the fact he's making Ryu work here before he has to flip the lineup over has been great. That one fell it off down the past the third base line. So the count remains full. This will be Ryu's 90th pitch coming up here in just the bottom of the fifth. Here it is. That one once again fell it off. Man, Kingery is just surviving here at the plate. Well, it's still a full count. Any pitch can end it, but this one just keeps going on. See what happens here. That's a swing and a miss. He can't battle out of that. Whiffs on that excellent pitch there from Ryu. Drops it right in the middle there and gets a strikeout. Well, he sure made him work for it, but he eventually gets him out with the same pitch that he struck out Real Mido with to start the inning on that outside breaking ball, cutting back towards the plate, starts out of the zone and heads toward it, but both of them seem like they were going to stay wide in the, the other handed hitter's batter's box, but both are swinging strikeouts. Now Ryu just one out of the way from getting through a fifth clean. Roman Quinn 0 for 2 in the day, the ground out and a fly out. And a 1-0 count, and make that a 1-1 count as that changeup gets right up the middle there. Here's the pitch. That one driven into right field. Hernandez looking at it, and he makes the play, finds it in the lights there. So no runs allowed in that inning for Ryu. He's able to get through it. So we head to the six. Two, three, four hitters up next for the Jays on the virtual Jays Network. Welcome back to Philadelphia, Virtual Jays Network. Jackson Farrell joined by Drew Frank in the booth. As we see Kevin Biggio, the Jays' best hitter tonight, no question about that. A two-run homer in the first to give the Blue Jays those two runs you see on the board there. And a walk in the third. And we'll see what he can do now in his third plate appearance of the game against Nola, who looks dialed in at the moment. Well, Nola hasn't allowed a single hit back since that home run. He's now pitched four clean innings, allowing a couple walks, and that's it. No runner to advance past first base. Nobody even reaching via the base hit. So Kevin Biggio now, fourth time through the orders, sorry, third time through the order, has to make something happen. Swing and a miss there. A pretty violent one at that. And a low inside pitch from Nola. So it's a 1 1 count. And this is what you're expecting from Nola. Mention the volatility last year, uh, a little bit rougher than 2019, but what he showed in 2019, just phenomenal. Got all sorts of Cy Young attention and MVP votes, but yeah, you, you didn't quite get it last year, but this is a display honing some of that 2018. As that one misses well inside there, that knuckle curve, which is a very interesting pitch, I might add. Uh, it's a 2-2 count. In terms of that knuckle curve, how should he use it effectively? An account like this? He can kind of use it whenever, and that's because he's got such great command of it. It's more so the fact that he's got to use it on the edges of the strike zones, working in, working out, and keeping it anywhere but up. 
And that four seam rides inside, so it'll make the count full here to Biggio, the number two hitter, leading off the sixth for the Jays as he tries to add to what's been a pretty good day at the plate for him. Here's the payoff pitch. That one is swung on and flown up very high. It looks like Quinn has a read on it in center, and he does. So Biggio is retired for the first time tonight. Quinn out in center had all sorts of time to get under that one. But we talked about his range out there. Didn't have to show it off there, but when he does, he's got the fourth fastest sprint speed in all of baseball in the entire MLB, running 30.1 feet per second. Wow. So he is a base stealing threat as much as anyone in the bigs, really, in baseball. As Guriel Jr. swings and misses on that, we see Nick Pavetta and Ranger Suarez getting warm in the Phillies' pen in case Nola runs into some trouble. And he is up near 100 pitches now. 0-1 count to Guriel Jr. Sets up inside. Real Muto is, and that one is inside and missing. So 1-1 one, one count. And it's a Phillies pen that's been decimated by injuries. Lost their closer long-term. David Robertson out with an elbow problem. So is Victor Arano. Sir Anthony Dominguez out as well. They've got all sorts of problems. Even some of their middle-tier guys. They signed Tommy Hunter, who's out with an injury. Add to the list Robert Stock and Daniel De Los Santos. And there's all sorts of names that this bullpen's missing. So it's, it's pieced together with guys like Francisco Liriano, who they've brought in to kind of help fill some roles and mop up and that kind of long relief. But definitely a weakness for this team. And that one is flown out into right center field. Quinn, yeah, look at that speed. He gets over and has time to make the play very easily there. Wow, his... That speed and that range is certainly something that's a valuable asset to any team in the field. But you mentioned all the injuries in the bullpen. Drew, a 525 ERA uh, for the Phillies this season through 10 games. That gives them, it make, ranks them 27th in baseball. So, yeah, I think that's one of the differences between these two teams. They've both been hitting at a similar rate, but the pitching has just been lackluster. Although not tonight, as Nola has put up a really good start here really has a great way to bring things back we saw in the pregame graphic that nola's era was up over nine and that's just a sample size thing tonight he's really brought that down and you knew that was bound to happen with a guy as talented as nola is as he paints that fastball there on the corner yeah and that being his 100th pitch gets him ahead one two in the count against guerrero jr cleanup hitter for the jays swinging a miss there he was reaching for it and couldn't get it so another strikeout for nola in this one what an outing for him Remains a 4-2 ball game as we head to the bottom of the sixth here in Philly. Well, everyone, and welcome back to Jays Phillies. It's a 4-2 Phillies lead here in the sixth inning as the 8-9-1 hitters do it for the Phillies, and it'll be Shunny Amaguchi coming in for his fifth appearance this season. And he's looked good so far in his first few outings in his MLB career. Coming over from playing in Japan, mostly out of the rotation, he's been working in relief here. Gave up a big home run in the Red Series, coming in into... Uh, in, a, in a relief situation, gave up a home run to Joey Votto and was taken out of the game early. But outside of the appearance, he's, he's looked good pitching multiple innings in relief. Then we see that fork ball get in there for the strike. So a 1-1 count to Hazley, who's 1-for-1 one one on the day with a walk in the second and a single in the fourth. We'll see what he can do here, the number eight hitter. That one missing high from Yamaguchi. He's being able to dial up that heel on the fastball, though 95 consistently on the gun in a 2-1 count now to the number eight hitter. And that one is fouled off, evens up the count at two. And part of that comes from the fact now that he's in the bullpen, he can sell out just a little more and push a little harder on that fastball when he's not trying to go six or seven innings a night. 2-2 two -two pitches driven into right center field. Oh, and Biggio was going to make the play, but he couldn't reach it. And it gets down for a base hit. Some miscommunication out there in the shallow outfield for the Blue Jays. That almost looked like it might have been the right fielder's ball with how far Biggio had to go. Sprinting after it, couldn't quite get to it. But yeah, found the perfect spot there as that drops in. 
And just a case there, I think, if the second baseman Biggio wanted to do a little too much. You know, he's had a good game, and he's trying to, you know, give his team some momentum. I get it. He's a young player, and he wants to do that. But I think he ranged a little too far out in the outfield there. I think he just should. In a situation like that, a young defender just needs to allow the right fielder to make the play. And speaking of making a play, Shaw can't do it. As that one goes right off his glove, but he makes the play anyways. Oh, my goodness. So he makes the error, Shaw does at first, on an Aaron Nola bunt. It goes, oh, it looks like he will. Yes, he's out on the play. Man, what a crazy sequence that was, wasn't it, Drew? And that's the second time Nola's bunted over the Shaw, and there's been some complications. First time he threw the second, didn't have a chance, everyone was safe. This time he just flubs it, but they managed to get the runner. And there's another play this time. <laughs> a little less drama about that as that will retire uh, Gene Segura. I don't even know who was at the play. Yes, it was Gene Segura who was trying, who was able to actually bat the runner over to third. So Hazley at third for Bryce Harper at the plate. But yeah, craziness there from Shaw. He was able to corral and get Noel out and then makes the play there to get Segura out. So all of a sudden, <laughs> pretty eventful over there at first. But Harper at the plate, he's 0 for 3 on the day. And this is pretty unlike him, isn't it? Yeah, he is, he's looking to do something here. Just the... An, a runner 90 feet away now as a base hit anywhere will add one extra run to the boards. The Phillies have done a lot offensively, and he just wants to be a part of it. First pitch ball to Bryce Harper, the powerful right fielder hitting number two today. And it's interesting, Girardi has him pretty high in the lineup. You know, normally Harper's a guy who hits three, four, maybe even sometimes five. But putting him a bit higher in the lineup... I guess gives you more options down, you know, in terms of putting Hoskins at the three hole. And that way you get Real Muto and Gregorius, two other power hitters in the middle lineup. 1-1 one, one count to Harper as he fouls that one off down the first baseline. We saw why the second hole is great for Harper in this spot in the second inning when the 7-8 guys were able to get something going and Harper came on with two on, two out. Might not have had a chance there if he was down in the five hole to do that in that situation. So now two outs and two strikes and a ball here to Bryce Harper. 0 for 3 on the day. Yamaguchi trying to get through this inning without allowing another run. Runner on third as Harper tries to get Hazley in to score uh, as that one is fouled off. So a runner on third and still a 1-2 count for Harper. who's 0 for 3 on the day. Here's the pitch. That one once again fouled off. So Harper really being able to stay alive here as he tries to drive that runner home. He hit the ball deep to center field, right up to the warning track in his last at bat, but just got under it and wasn't able to hit it out. Here's the pitch. That one is low. Evens up the count at two now to Harper, who's, you know, he's got some good plate discipline when he wants to. Uh, and so much power in that bat, so much respect from every pitcher who he faces. And we'll see what Yamaguchi does here. 2-2 two -two missing outside, so that fork ball missing well away. So now a full count to Harper who at one point was in a 1-2 count, worked his way back into a full count, so we'll see what Yamaguchi's got up his sleeve here to try to get out the superstar right fielder. Here's the pitch. That one is fouled off. This <laughs> at-bat continues. Yamaguchi's worked a lot in on Harper's hands as this has gotten deeper. That time jams him. Harper manages to get a piece to stay alive, but he's worked a lot inside. And that one fouled off as well. So this at bat continues. What a marathon it is at the plate. Harper trying to outlast Yamaguchi. And Yamaguchi trying to do the same. Trying to get out of this inning. Here's the payoff pitch. That one also fouled off inside. Yamaguchi may or may not be back out here for the seventh. The Jays have the middle bottom of the order coming up as it's going to be six, seven, eight. So he may or may not come in. Or we may not be lifted for a pinch hitter as the Jays have got Brandon Drury on the bench and a couple other pieces. So we'll have to see. It's almost his, his day will be dependent on how things go at the plate for the Jays. That's a good point. Now that you're playing in National League Park, those are something to think about. As that one is lined over to second, Biggio makes the play. And the runner is stranded at third. So Yamaguchi gets through the sixth without allowing a run. And we head to the seventh in Philadelphia. Well, but welcome back, and now we see uh, Nick Pavetta come up. And, you know, there's 
I have few things in common with major leaguers, but I have one in common with Nick Pavetta. We were born in the same city, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. That's right, you see a Canadian on the mound, folks, and he's up against a Canadian team, Travis Shaw at the plate. Well, Pavetta brings something interesting to the table with the, the swing and miss he's able to generate with his breaking ball. Is that one that quickly is flown out into deep left center field? Looks like Shaw. That one is. That one's gone. Oh my goodness, Travis Shaw hits that one into left center, spraying it a bit, using the whole field for his third home run of the season, and all of a sudden, a leadoff shot gives us a one-run ball game here. And that looked innocent enough, but the ball's really carried tonight. Talk about the first two were both blasted. This ball not doesn't look like it, at least off the bat. Hits it to a pretty deep part of the park. It's a low pitch. He goes down and gets it. Almost seems to pull off a little bit as his, his body's pulling away from it. But just the strength to go down and bring that. Almost all arms to pull that one out of the park. We talked about it earlier. He doesn't hit against the ship very often. If he's going to hit it out of the yard, it's almost always going to be the left field. But, sorry, it's almost always going to be the right field. But... Man, a surprising, surprising home run there from Shaw. And as you mentioned, now just a one-run game. And the very first pitch Pavetta threw in this game is demolished in, well, I wouldn't say demolished, but uh, definitely uh, hit. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Go Canada, that's right. Definitely hit into left center field for a homer. So Shaw using the whole diamond for the home run. The mayor of Ding Dong City adds another to his belt. And it's a one-two count. Pavetta dealing to Hernandez here as he tries to recover in the seventh. And a swing and a miss there on Hernandez on that slow breaking ball. And Real Muto finishes the play by throwing a first, so one away now. What I don't understand right now about the Phillies situation is that Nola bunted in his last at-bat, which confuses me because Pavetta coming in now, Nola bunted without returning to the mound, and they've got some weapons on that bench. The, the biggest bat against the righty Yamaguchi that I probably might expect to see would be Jay Bruce, who's there, a, a power-hitting left-handed outfielder. But instead, it was Nola who bunts the runner over and, uh, and is now lifted. So I was expecting when he stayed in the game to bunt, you'd think he'd be back on the mound here in the seventh. But no, it's Nick Pavetta instead. Very interesting choices there for Girardi. And 0-2 count now to Grichuk. Another swing and a miss. So we're seeing that... That off-speed Pavetta being able to work it here is in an 0-2 count to Grichuk, looking for the strikeout. And that one, that slider, a little low there. We saw the strikeout against Teos Hernandez on that breaking ball, and that's going to be his bread and butter. He can generate some swinging misses on that, especially now against Grichuk and Jansen, two guys who whiff quite often. Yeah, and they've whiffed quite often in this game, too. Stri two strikeouts each for Grichuk and Jansen so you could argue two of the Jays best hitters to start this season or at least in the conversation to be but tough starts to this one thus far but it's a one run ball game all of a sudden so this is I mean, it was already a game at the start of this inning but even closer now this one is going to go down to the wire here and with those two hitters you just kind of take that in their swing that's part of their game they they sell it a little bit for some power and it's worked early in this season overall as that one has fouled off past third so the count remains tied at two here. One away for Nick Pavetta in this inning. On the first pitch he threw, he allowed a homer. But after that, a strike out to Hernandez. And in the battle now, uh, in a battle, I should say now, with Grichuk, still in a 2-2 count. A lot of deep counts in this game. Whole, ton whole lot of foul balls on both sides. And that one misses well outside. Real Muto couldn't even control it. Let that one slip aside. A full count now as that one is fouled up and towards the seats so it'll still remain a full count here Grichuk doing a great job of battling in this at bat with one out trying to get something going after the Blue Jays have already scored one run in this inning they're trying to add another that one's drilled but foul that was a fastball in on the hands it looked like Grichuk was ready for because he gets his hands through his own quickly hit that one hard but as you mentioned foul see what happens here that one drilled up past third base and it'll go in the left field. Hazley can't field it cleanly, so Grichuk is going to drive into center, or second, rather. And uh, one out double. Scores decision. It's a single and an error in left. So there you go. A single, technically, for Grichuk, but he advances to second on the error from Hazley there. 
could say almost deserved the double with how hard that one was stung to third base. W went for a dive over there. Did, uh, sorry, did Nick Kingery, Scott Kingery. But, yeah, no real play on that ball. That was hit hard. Yeah, Kingery not able to get that one. As Jansen drills that into right, Harper right there to make the play and delivers an absolute bomb back into the infield. So, Grichuk not able to advance, but that ball looked good off the bat from Jansen there. Ball hit hard from Jansen. That'll beat the strikeout, but unfortunately not able to move the runner over. As now it'll be Reese McGuire coming in to pinch it for the, hitter, the pitcher spot in order. One of the first pinch hitters we've seen all season here on the Virtual Jays Network. And it comes in the form of Reese McGuire, as you mentioned, Drew. And, you know, he's a guy who, when he's had the opportunity, can deliver some hits. But he decides to pop that one back up behind the plate. And the play is quickly made by Real Muto. So just one pitch for the pinch hitter, McGuire, but to end the inning. But nonetheless, Shaw delivers a opposite field home run. There to put the Jays within one as we stretch in Philly. Well, everyone, and welcome back here in Philadelphia as we see Justin Miller come in. So Yamaguchi only gets one inning of work in this one and doesn't allow a run or anything. Did allow a leadoff single. Uh, but now we'll see Justin Miller in his fourth appearance of the season against Reese Hoskins, JT Realmuto, and Didi Gregorius. <laughs> That's uh, not exactly the easiest part of the lineup to face here for a reliever. No, not, not an easy matchup at all. At least he dodges Bryce Harper, the final out of last inning, so he won't have to deal with that big bat, especially as a righty, the, the stuff he's got. Um, lucky to miss that matchup, but yeah, no no easy assignment here, 3-4-5 in this Stacks Phillies lineup. So both starting pitchers now out of this game, and very different stories, I think. You know, Hunter Ryu struggled kind of all throughout the game, really. Allowing four runs, uh, but Aaron Nola, on the other hand, really got into a groove in this game, didn't he? Well, we talked about he almost had a second life after giving up runs in the top of the first one. The Phillies struck right back. It almost leveled the playing field, and then from where the pitchers went, starting in that moment on, really decided where we are in this game so far. Nola absolutely locked in, allowed just the two runs over six innings, only those two hits. No hits over the next five innings, racked up ten strikeouts with just two walks. For Ryu, on the other hand, five innings, giving up six hits, four runs, all earned, walking three, striking out four. So we talked about the walks to strikeout ratio, 10 to 2 strikeouts to walks for Nola, and that was a big reason he was successful. And Justin Miller comes in and gets a strikeout, and the first batter he faces, Reese Hoskins, on a, the high heat there. Great pitch. Hoskins doesn't quite have his swing in midseason form yet, so Miller, what does he do? He challenges him up and in with the high heat and blows it by him and gets the first out here. So one away now for JT Realmuto. One for two in this game. A little walk, a strikeout, and a single way back in the first, that one was. He scored as part of that three-run homer from D.D. Gregorius, who was on deck. So Justin Miller, you know, I think with this bullpen, what Charlie Montoya is doing is still trying to figure things out. But can we say for now that Miller is kind of the seventh inning guy no matter what? Is that one's hit up the middle? Well, we've seen Miller used in close games um, at the very least. So he's a guy that after a rough outing in his first start, he came in on, I believe it was the second game of the season against Boston and got hit around a little bit. Montoya's gone back to him, and it's similar to what we talked about with guys like Guriel and Bo Bichette and even Teoscar Hernandez, where Montoya keeps going back to them, and Justin Miller's another guy like that, that he's giving him every chance. 
As we see a replay of that Gregorius bomb way back in the first. The sun was still setting at that point. But yeah, that was... You know, it started with a Reese Hoskins two-out walk, then JT Real Muto with a two-out single. And then Gregorius just unloads on that one. Make sure to flip his bat, too. Don't forget about that one. Exactly. An 80-grade bat flip. <laughs> so he's two for three on the day with a strikeout. He also singled in the fifth. As we see Romano and Sam Gaviglio get warm in the pen for the Blue Jays. But for right now, it's Miller as he's in a 1-0 count to Gregorius, the lefty, playing second today. That one's fouled off, so the count evens up at 1. Romano and Gaviglio, two guys that haven't seen action yet in 2020. Montoya's been going up quite a bit to guys like Sean Yamaguchi and even uh, Justin Miller, who we see now, Anthony Bass to a lesser extent. So Romano, it'll be interesting to see if, if he'll be able to get his first appearance of 2020, and, and same goes for Gavilia. Very exciting. You're right about that, Drew. As that one gets in there for a strike. Wow, that just painted the outside upper corner there of the plate. So Miller gets ahead of Gregorius now 1-2, and he'll try to get the out here with one on and one out. And here's the pitch. That one is hit up towards first. Shaw field throws to second 4-1, but shipped back to first 4-2. A double play recorded there. No mistakes on that one. And that'll end the inning, so Miller gets through it. And it remains 4-3 now as we head to the eighth in Philly. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Citizen Bank here in Philadelphia. And we'll see Hector Neris now at the, at, on the mound, rather, making his fourth appearance of the season. And Neris, a guy that was expected to be the closer without David Robertson in the lineup. Instead, he's just moved back to a high leverage role as Adam Morgan, the lefty, has been closing games for Joe Girardi so far this year. So an interesting decision. You can see him up there throwing now. Girardi's shaking things up when, since he's come here into Philadelphia. That's one of his many changes, but moral of the story is that Neris is well-equipped to deal with the top of the Jays' order here. And a one-0 count to Bichette, who takes low. That splitter missing the zone, so it's a 2-0 count to the leadoff hitter Bichette. And a single in the first, but after that hasn't done much. So he's one for three on the day. We'll see what he can do here. As he fouls that one off past the first base line, so it's 2-1 now. Pavetta goes just the one inning against the Jays, gives up a couple hits, one being the big home run to Shaw, and now it's just a one-run game. So the big guys, Naris has to come out, Morgan warming up in the pen. The other setup guy, Parker, you saw also throwing the righty reliever out there. So a close game here is far from over. 2-2 okay. pitch misses outside. That's... Two-seamer, so it's a full count now to Bichette, the leadoff hitter. Yeah, and Neris, you know, assuming this is the one of the setup roles this year in that bullpen, as you mentioned, Drew, a very injured bullpen and a new-look bullpen for these Phillies. As that one's fouled off, count remains full to Bichette. And it's not much you can really do when four or five of your big bullpen pieces get hurt. Not much prevention there if you can do about that. They've done a great job to adapt and brought some guys up and signed some guys to depth roles. And so it'll be interesting to see what 2020 has in store for this bullpen. And with the Jays down a run, they would need to get some scoring off this bullpen. We'll see if they can do it in this inning as there's a leadoff walk for Bichette. So he reaches now, and so it'll be Kevin Biggio <laughs> with the runner on first in the form of Bichette. And we saw in the first he was able to drill a two-run shot. He had a walk in the third and flew out to center in the sixth. And he's in a very important position now with nobody out and a chance to generate some much-needed offense for the Jays here. And this matchup specifically is intriguing. Biggio's home run was on an elevated pitch up and in. He was able to get out in front of and pull. Neris is someone that's going to come right after you. You can see a fastball in the upper half of the zone there on the other half of the plate. But Neris hasn't been afraid throughout his career to go up and challenge guys. So Biggio, we talked about that big home run. Interesting to see whether that scares Neris off or if he's coming back up and in with high heat later in this at-bat. Very fascinating for sure. The 0-1, he gets in there and fouled off. 
So it'll be an 0-2 now, quickly, as Neres getting ahead of Biggio. And a huge at-bat for the Jays here. These young Jays as Biggio swings and misses there. So three strikes to Biggio. All of a sudden, and now one away as we take a look at the starting pitchers, as we've kind of already talked about in this game. Well, the damage was done early. The bottom two rows tell a lot of the story. Three walks to four strikeouts as opposed to two walks to nine strikeouts. Nola, the curveball was working for him. He was changing speeds and generating those swings and misses. And, well, a ground ball that Ryu always tries to generate is almost as good as a strikeout as it won't move the runners around. It's more of an indicator of what that strikeout number means. If it's high, it means Nola's got his stuff and he's commanding it. And if it's low for him specifically, it usually means he's not hitting his spots. So not just those nine batters retired on the strikeout, which is impressive on itself, but just that's a, a representation of just how dialed in he was today. And no one to Gurriel Jr. as he drives that one to the left field. Hazley looks like he has a read on it, and he will. And he'll make the throw back in, so Bichette certainly can't tag. So, yeah, leadoff walk to start this inning, going in the right direction, certainly for the Jays. But then a strikeout for Biggio, a flyout quickly for Gurriel Jr. So two away, Guerrero Jr. not really being able to generate offense as much. as It's going to take more of a, a base hit or something, which Guerrero Jr. is very capable of delivering, just not in this game. He's 0 for 3. Gurriel just got under that one. He hit that one hard, but didn't have enough to take it out of the park. So Guriel Jr. 0 for 3 on the day now with a walk. Continues his cold streak. We'll see what Guerrero Jr. can do with the play. He struck out in his last at bat. And that one's drilled down on the left field line. It'll get into the corner. Hazley giving chase. Bichette comes into third. Will he go? Oh, he is. He's going to try to go. And there's the throw in from Segura. And the tag is made. Bichette is called out at the plate. What a throw from Segura. And this inning is over. Philadelphia stays in the lead 4-3. Welcome back after a pretty eventful end of that last half inning as there were two out. Bobichette on first after getting a leadoff walk off of Hector Neris. And Guerrero Jr. drills one down the third baseline. I mean, he absolutely pounded that one. And it goes in the corner. Hazley makes a good throw to the cutoff man, Segura, playing short. He delivers an absolute strike to the catcher, Real Muto, who makes the tag at the plate on Bichette. A very bang-bang play, but Bichette called out on the tag at the plate, so the Jays are not able to add that tying run. And Bichette speed got him there. Closer play than I was expecting. A strong throw came in from left field. Thought he would have been gunned. He ran right through the stop sign from the third base coach. But a, a relay from Gene Segura. The throw's right there. The tag, and they got him. And man, that play could define this whole game if the Jays don't get something going in the ninth. It's a good defense for Philadelphia. Perhaps saves this game for them. Perhaps to to say that, but... Definitely saves a run, so they remain in the lead now as Justin Miller comes out for his second inning of work. And a 3-1 count to the number 6 hitter, Scott Kingery, who is 0-3 for 3 in the day with a couple strikeouts and a flyout. We'll see what he can do here as he tries to generate some offense and tack on some insurance for the Phillies. Nope. That one misses high, so it's a walk. A leadoff walk in the bottom of the 8th for the Phillies here. Well, a nice way to rebound for him. Two swinging strikeouts earlier so far tonight, as well as a flyout. So, great way to turn around his day. At least reach, reach base once tonight before the, the game is over here. So, still 0 for 3 on the day, but at least he's on board here. and can try and do something with the bottom of the order coming up. A bunch of toolsy hitters now, still with none away. It's going to be very important for Miller to not allow any runs in this inning. We've seen how difficult it is for the Jays to be able to generate some runs late in this game. As that one's bunted over to second, Biggio's got to be quick, and that will not be in time. Really, no doubt about it. Quinn, so quick on the base pass, as we've talked about in this game, gets a really good bunt on that. Now, a, a pretty strong bunt, as that one was hit well towards second base, but Biggio just not able to make the play in time. 
phenomenal bunt there because he gets it past the pitcher and Shaw holding on the runner doesn't have a play to get over and cut it off before it rolls out to Biggio. Biggio playing relatively deep at second no play like you said almost not even worth flipping it over the first there because Quinn with his speed we mentioned fourth fastest man in the majors in 2019 and you can see exactly why right there. So now Adam Hazley, who is two for two on the day with a walk, has a chance to drive in some more offense here. He pops that one back up to the catcher, Jansen. Looks like he'll make the play, and he will. So one away now. Uh, but you've got a lot of speed on those base paths with Kingery at second and Roman Quinn, who's arguably the fastest guy in the big leagues, or one of them, uh, over there at first. And now we'll see a pinch hitter for the Phillies as they try to Tack on some insurance here in the ninth, or in the eighth rather. It'll be Nick Williams hitting 182 on the season against Miller here. Lefty bat. I, I was expecting maybe we'd see the veteran Jay Bruce coming out of here, but a similar type profile. Nick Williams has some swing and miss in his uh, in his past, but if he get, gets hold of one, he's got the strength to drive one into the gap, and hey, he could score Roman Quinn from first if he places it well enough. Yeah, you're right about that, especially with that speed on the base pass. So, an 0-2 count to Williams, though, with one away, the pinch hitter. And Miller deals. That one fouled off, so Williams staying alive here at the plate. Now, up over 20 pitches for Miller, who's trying to survive here and keep this a one-run ball game. Much needed here for the righties. That one misses inside, a 2-2 count. Now, pardon me, a 1-2 count <laughs> to... Nick Williams, the pinch hitter. And here's the one-two delivery. That one fouled off. Count remains one-two. Couple nice spoils from Williams with two runners on base on first and second. He's just trying to keep a ball out of off of the ground, to avoid a double play, try and move him over at the very least. That one's hit out over into deep left field. Guriel Jr. looks like he has a beat on it on the warning track, and he does. Fires a cannon into third, so the runners can't advance. So now two away, and it's still a one-run ball game now as Gene Segura steps up, the number one hitter for the Phillies, and he's one for th four on the day with an RBI back in the fourth. That uh, could potentially end up being the winning run for the Phillies here. And we talked about it with the Travis Shaw home run that just kind of snuck out of the park. That fly ball didn't seem as dangerous as it ended up being off the bat. But with the wind blowing out, that carried all the way to the warning track as Gurriel was just about pressed up against the wall to haul that one in. So that, that shot out to left, Nick Williams going opposite field, almost did some real damage here and narrowly missed a three-run homer. 1-0 count to Segura now, and that one misses well outside. That's slider. So it's a 2-0 count, hitter's count to Segura, the shortstop. And we'll see if what he can do here with a runner in scoring position, trying to generate some offense for Philadelphia. As that one's hitting the center field, Gritchuk ranging back to the track and makes the play. So Justin Miller able to escape from the inning after allowing two runners to reach with nobody out. And we head now to the ninth inning. The Jays one last chance to tie this thing up. Welcome back to Philadelphia. A bit of a surprise here is we're going to see Blake Parker come into the game. and Normally the closer Morgan would be in the game right now. He's had a number of saves on the year already. And it happens to be Parker's very first appearance of the season here in a one-run ball game in the ninth. Interesting move for Girardi. Especially considering you get the lefty shot at the plate. Usually people shy away from using a lefty as your closer, such as Adam Morgan, but you'd think this would be a, a great spot to deploy him, but clearly Girardi's got something else on his mind. Well, especially with this being Parker's first appearance this year, it is a little confusing, but nonetheless, that first pitch gets in there for a strike right on the outside part of the plate. So it'll be Shaw hernandez Grichuk trying to mount a bit of a rally here for the Jays, crowd up on their feet at Citizens Bank Park. This two-game interleague set, and the Phillies are trying to take the first one. As that one misses low, so it's a 1-1 one -one count to Shaw, the home run hitter back in the seventh that actually cut this deficit from 4-2 to 4-3. 
Yeah, big hit from him. Now all the Jays need is one run here to try and, at the very least, hold a, hold them in the ninth and push it to extras. They need something now. Just three outs left to play with. See what they can do here is that one just touches the inside lower part of the play. An excellent pitch from Parker to get ahead. Now one suit is shot. Looks to battle here. Parker getting set. Takes a moment, and here's a delivery. Swing and a miss there on that high fastball. Shaw strikes out, one away. That looked like it might have been the cutter from Parker. He throws a fast, oh, that looks like the straight one in slow motion. He, he can throw his fastball straight at in the low 90s, but he also cuts it and sinks it a little bit. That one gets in on the hands on, on Shaw there, and definitely a strike, not able to get a piece to spoil it. A great pitch there is Parker now. First battery faces in 2020. So far, so good with a nice strikeout. And now here's Teoscar Hernandez. 0 for 3 on the day. Three home runs and five RBI on the season. So he's got some power. He's got the ability to generate offense. But, I mean, he's 0 for, he was 0 for 12 in the series against New York. He's 0 for 3 in this one. So 0 for 15 since Thursday. We'll see what he can do now. An 0-1 count against Parker, who's dealing here. That one's just missing up high. Ball one. Nice take there from Teoscar. Easy to jump out and get jumpy with the fans on their feet, but disciplined approach. High fastball is going to give a lot of green lights and, and a lot of hitters' mind, but he lays off that ball there. And he fouls that pitch off, so it'll move the count to 1-2 now. Hernandez, two strikeouts on the day and a pop-out to first, back in the first. And we'll see what he can do now with one away, really needing something here to get on base and Get things started for the Jays as they are down 4-3. to three. That one's fouled off over to right field. And, well, how did we get here? Well, it started with Gavin Biggio hitting a two-run home run back in the first. Put the Jays up 2-0. Didi Gregorius answers in the, in the bottom of the first with a three-run home run to make things 3-2. Gene Segura gets a single to, to get an RBI back in the fourth. Driving in Adam Hazley. As that one is driven into right field for a base hit. So Teoscar Hernandez ends his cold streak, reaches... And now one on and one away here in the ninth. Well, and what better time to come through with a base hit than in the ninth inning, down by one, and already with a runner out and just two outs left to play with. Teoscar Hernandez gets a base hit, and now Randall Gritchuk, even though he's down in the seven hole, he's been great for the Jays, one of the league leaders in doubles and has walked quite a few times as well. So Blink Parker definitely not out of the woods here, even though he's facing seven, eight, nine now. Two strikeouts and a single for Gritchick in this one. He actually advanced a second on an error in left field. And we'll see what he can do here. He can use some more magic like he did in the last at-bat. 1-0 count to Gritchick. That one missing outside. It's a hitter's count now. Great eye from Gritchick. Parker's been all around the zone, missing with his fastball quite a bit. He, he's going to rely on the fastball a lot, only mix in a splitter in the curveball when he has to. Interesting to see if he sticks with it here or tries to split or cut the ball here. The 2-0 fouled right back off the plate and over behind the plate. So it's a 2-1 count now to the center fielder, Grichik. Parker gets set. And here's the pitch. Swing and a miss there, evens up the count at two. Well, a nice pitch there. You see the splitter really working. Gritchick was geared up for the fastball, takes a little bit off of it, and breaks that ball straight down, and Gritchick swings over top and just cuts right through that one. 2-2, two -two, Gritchick trying to stay alive, stay alive with a runner on and one out, and he swings and misses there. Second strikeout for Parker, and that's a huge out for the Phillies here. This is a beautiful pitch. You can see breaking straight down. It's almost like a changeup with how much he takes off of that ball. Fastball sits around 92, 93, but the splitter down at 80. Great change of speeds, and Gritch, it goes down swinging again tonight. So now we will see the closer, Adam Morgan, coming in and for his seventh appearance this season. He's got three saves and three opportunities. Um... But I don't mean to disrespect Joe Girardi, but why now? I think it's got to be something with a matchup that we're not seeing, whether it was in the past with something Blake Parker's done or, or something that Adam Morgan's been unable to do. He could have had a, a message from his bullpen coach that Morgan wasn't quite ready or wasn't sure about something, but 
Now, I mean, here, no more messing around as it's Morgan in. And with Neris gone and Parker gone, better hope Morgan's got his stuff because this is the whole back end being used. That one's going over second. That should do it, and it will. Gregorius finishes things off. So the Jays had the tying run at first but are not able to bring him home. And the Jays really struggled to generate some offense after the first inning in this one. So it's a 4-3 game as... The Phillies take the first game of this two-game interleague series. Uh, and, you know, the bullpen really comes through for the Phillies here. After Nick Pavetta allows hit a home run on his very first pitch to Travis Shaw after that, a lot of shutdown for them. And ultimately, the Phillies grab this one, so they move to 5-6 and six now on the season. The Jays were able to get some runners on late in the game. You can see uh, three runs on six hits. Four of those hits came in the 7th, 8th, and ninth, mostly because of how strong Aaron Nola was in those middle innings. But they stranded runners in each of those last three frames. When you're down just by one run, that is brutal to see. Runners on in each of the 7th, 8th, and ninth, and unable to cash in any of them. So Adam Morgan picks up the save and with just getting the one out. So an easy night of work for him. And Aaron Nola picks up the win. As we've talked about all game, Drew, he, he looked excellent after struggling early. Uh, Hunjin Ryu, though, kind of his first blemish on his resume with the Jays, the first of many to be, uh, to be presumed, but nonetheless not a great outing for Ryu today. Well, mostly it came from that two-out rally we talked about in that first inning. If something went out a little differently, you take those three runs off the board, and all of a sudden it's a, a passable or a pretty good start from Ryu. He just had a, ran into a bit of trouble in the second, managed to get out of it, but... The, we, we talked about what Hoskins and Real Muto were able to spark in that first inning by getting on base with two outs, and then the big blast from Didi Gregorius, of course, defined how this whole game wound up. Yeah, Didi Gregorius, a great day at the plate, two for four with a huge three-run home run. Ultimately put the Phillies in front, and they never really had to look back. A good day for JT Real Muto at the plate as well as he comes in to score on that one. But all in all, a, a very close game, and... You know, some positives and negatives for both sides, I think. But the Phillies get some mushy into pitching. And we'll be back here tomorrow on the Virtual Jays Network as Matt Shoemaker will take on Zach Wheeler. So that should be a very excellent pitching matchup here in the second and final game of this little interleague battle. So for Jackson Farrow, Andrew Frank, we appreciate you joining us this evening on the Virtual Jays Network. And we'll see you tomorrow as the Jays look to bounce back here in the second and final game in Philly. Have a good night, everyone.